Is bigger better? I'm talking housing developments, of course. This week, we heard house prices are up 10% on last year, highlighting once again the need to boost supply. Now, that's just the easy bit, because how we go about building these homes is where councils, developers and communities end up on tough terrain. To guide us through it, here's our Hampshire and Isle of Wight political reporter, Jessica Parker. Build more houses. That is what we absolutely need to do. 200,000 homes a year. Build more houses. The biggest housing crisis in a generation. Everyone seems to agree that we need more housing, but that's about where the consensus ends and the arguments begin. Where will these houses go? How many do we really need? And should we be building big new estates like the one planned for here at Wellborn in Fairham or smaller pocket developments? Sean Woodward leads Fairham Borough Council, an area where there are just over 45,000 households. He wants to build a further 6,000 here at Wellborn in the next 25 years and says it's a better option than piecemeal development. Residents across the borough, you know, generally what they want to see is us preserve the countryside strategic gaps between our town and our villages. You know, all of these communities have important green gaps between them, um, which would take, you know, a thousand houses here, a thousand houses there, but um, people in town really don't want to see that. And that's not the only reason why Councillor Woodward thinks going bigger is better. The important thing about building a, a large development, you know, 6,000 homes, is that then it qualifies for the infrastructure that is needed for a, for a community. So a secondary school, you know, if you don't have 6,000 homes, you don't get a secondary school. The road infrastructure, the community centres, the doctor's surgeries. Any two you like the free quid, girls, come on. 25 miles west of Fairham is Romsey, population 13,000. A handful of developments dotted round the town are causing quite a stir. It's a very sore point. Why? Tell us. Because there's already too many houses. I think in order for the um, long-term survival of the town, we need to um, invest in growing that town. I do come back to Romsey quite a bit, but I'm finding it a little bit overcrowded now with all the housing that's going on. Kate Greatrix is part of Romsave, a group trying to raise awareness about the 2,500 homes that are planned or already being built. I would be concerned if I was, you know, a, a, a businessman here and relying on trade because trying to get in and to park to visit the town will become a nightmare through the volume of traffic. Already trying to get onto the M27 is horrendous and, you know, I think I fear for the, the gridlock and the impact. People come here because it's an historical, lovely market town. Suddenly putting in 2,000 plus homes, you're going to change the character. So what's Rom Save's silver bullet? The Lusborough pocket, which has just gone, I think, to 48 houses, is an infill of derelict land that sat there for years, um, is in, in keeping um, with Romsey. Let's have more small pockets of growth rather than just large mass housing estates, you know, dumped in surrounding areas. These, we believe, then, are the correct locations for identifying growth. What these do is... They now, while some are advocating small pockets, areas, others are thinking much, much bigger. Well. James Gross is from Barton Wilmore, a Reading-based consultancy recently shortlisted in a competition to design a new garden city. Clearly, large numbers of garden cities across the UK would make a significant impact in reducing the, pr the pressure on smaller communities to take growth uh, that they perhaps uh, don't necessarily want. Although there needs to be a recognition that, that over time all places need to grow just to consume their own need from, from, their, own, from their own communities. Is the planning system working as it is? The current administration has tried very much uh, the, the, the well-understood and known localist agenda, but that agenda has not seen the delivery of housing numbers. And estimates suggest we're falling short by over 100,000 house builds a year in the UK, so catching up on those numbers won't be easy. For Wellborn in Fairham, if all goes ahead as planned, it'll have taken the best part of a decade to bring about. But Sean Woodward says if councils don't plough ahead, developers can use the appeals process to push for new housing where they want it, leaving councils with an ugly choice. It needs to be done. We'd rather not have to do it. But if we don't do it, it will be done to us and the result will be far, far worse. It's the big stick now, isn't it, to force house building through. 
Well, I mean, I think government always did do that. Government always did impose house building targets, and certainly under the previous government on local areas. And I think at least now, local areas get to decide how they want that housing to, to be, what, what, how they want it to look, what sort of size and scale and well, where they want it located. It's still not happening. And so you've got houses costing seven times income. But you, well, you can see from, from your VT that they, you know, there are big housing developments happening, as well as some infill development um, happening. You know, I think it's got to always be a, a combination of everything. You, you, you can infill to a certain extent, but as, as um, one of the, the, the people there just said, you know, you, you, you've got, always got to think about wh where people are going to be able to send their children to school, where they're going to be using the doctor's surgery, and sometimes only a big development like that is going to deliver the infrastructure that the area needs. 6,000 houses, it, it was suggested, in order to get the school and the community centres. I mean, and Gordon Brown had his eco-towns. They haven't happened. You know, there seem to be so many plans Maybe something is shifting now, but we're still not building the houses, are we? Well, take Crawley, for instance. It's, mm -hmm. it's locked. Its borders and boundaries are locked. Um, Horsham District Council, you've got Mid Sussex District Council, they're all putting their housing estates on the edge of Crawley. Two and a half thousand homes here, two and a half thousand homes there. Um, and you talk about six thousand homes, they're not putting the new schools, they're not putting the infrastructure. And this is mm -hmm. what the problem is. We do need more garden cities, but rather than keep re announcing Ebb's Fleet every couple of years with fewer and fewer houses in it, as I think it was 20,000 in 2012, and now it's down to 15 thousand is actually just getting on and do it but a lot of the reason that the development wasn't happening in the last few years is because there just wasn't the confidence of the bill of the builders but you know they there wasn't the confidence in the economy and the, the fact that the government has given the builders more faith now to build those houses because they know they'll be sold um, and has also freed up in the the Queen's speech recently she, she said that there would be um, more opportunity to release um, brownfield sites DIO land you know defense land so that um, those sort of uh, sites can be more available for, for but it's not local if councils are just building around the edge of Crawley or Romsey as we saw there you know that, that well, you, you say around the edge the but in, in, in Gosport 21 percent of the surface area of my constituency is still owned by the MOD you know there are bits that have been disused for years and actually could be ideally located to provide housing for people but and have never had the chance to do yet? it well it's as I say it's just been mentioned in the in the Queen's speech so hopefully the government's putting forward the the wheels in motion to be able to allow those but sort of proposals lo localism to happen. was supposed to have done all this by now surely well, localism has gone has gone quite a long way to deliver this, but if if um, big chunks of land are still in the hands of the government, it, you know you have to be able to prize prize that away from them. And, and certainly now that the the, um, the, the legislation is coming forward, that's going to allow that to happen. And uh, you know m more and more housing is is beginning to come forward. Is it coming forward? Is it, is it the market conditions, do you believe? It's, it's the right kind of housing that needs to come forward as well, because it's, right. it's all very well uh, with the garden cities, uh, which we, we support putting garden cities, but uh, not just two of them. We need, you know, we need proper investment and proper strategic look at the whole of, um, not just the South East, but the country. And it's easy for the Labour Party to talk about this. House construction virtually ground to a halt, even one of the... But then that's market conditions, that's what you were arguing earlier. Yeah, that but even one of the... the yes, but even during the booming years of Labour, I mean, one of the London Assembly said that um, more houses were built in the final year of the Thatcher government than in the 13 years of the whole Labour government. That is not quite true. That, that quote is slightly off. Um, but, you, you know, we look at house building this year, it's the lowest it's been since the 1920s. So we could get into a debate about who's done what, but actually... Yeah, house building this year is the highest since 2007. Right, well, let's see what happens and whether it's the schools and all the rest of it comes with it.